Welcome to the second episode of the Four Downs Podcast, the show where we give you the four most important topics, according to us, in 20 minutes or less, so you can keep up with everything going on in the NFL, on your morning commute, while you're eating breakfast, or whenever you have some spare time. With me again today is the president of Chaotically Intolerant, Alex Boyajian. I'm, I'm thinking of like changing my name to, uh, to Mr. Manager. I love Arrested Development <laughs> and uh, Mr. Manager of Chaotically Intolerant will just be perfect. Perfect. Um, but no, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Uh, if you guys have been paying attention to the different shows that I do, this this will be my third show I've done in, in about two two hours, roughly. So uh, John is definitely, definitely going to be the energy on the show. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be the straight man today. I will and try I to John bring it. Also does not have a lot of energy, too, so... <laughs> Got to pick each other up sometimes. Yeah. We're, we're going to do it, though. We're going to make it through. It's football. Football is fun. Um, we're doing this during Thursday Night Football as well. Yeah, I'm going to see uh, Creed with the fiancé, newly engaged, um, less than a month now. So uh, we are going to concert tomorrow, get away from the kids for a little bit. So we are recording this as the uh, Jets and uh, Patriots are playing right now. So there will no be no Thursday Night Football coverage. But we have other topics to cover. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, so the first thing I want to touch on before we pick a game this week is the New Orleans Saints. Um, in a recent article I posted on chaoticallyintolerant.com, I mentioned after week one that an overreaction would be that the Saints could be a playoff team. Uh, after their absolute manhandling of the Cowboys, I no longer think that's an overreaction. I think that is a proper reaction. Um, Derek Carr looked outstanding. He's hitting Raheed Shahid deep. He looks healthy. Raheed Shahid. Rahe- oh, sorry. Raheed Shahid. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? You said Raheed. Raheed. Wait. Hold on. It was. It was you said Raheed Shahid. It's Rashid. Rashid Shahid. Shahid. Hey, the rest? Is that right? Can you start the timer over? Let's run that one more time through. <laughs> no, let's do that. Let's do that. I like that. All That's right. Good. It was good. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Rahid Shahid. Um, Alvin Kamara is RB1 through two weeks of the season. Um, I like what I'm seeing from them. And the kind of knock on them after week one was that they didn't have a good defense. They couldn't stop anybody other than the Panthers. They held the Cowboys, who are considered to be an elite offense, to 19 points. They have Willie Gay Jr. They have Tyron Matthew. They have Cam Jordan. The pieces are there for them to have success on defense as well. I'm interested in seeing – what do you think? Watching them week one and two, where do you think they will finish uh, in relation to the Bucs and the Falcons, who were the favorites going into the season in the division? Well, the Bucs look – uh, very good. I think that I think they're still better than the Saints. Um, that they, they feel a little bit more complete to me. I think they feel a little more real. I, I feel like Baker is Baker. I think is still just the better quarterback. Um, Derek Carr has. We've really seen one good year, like really one solid great year from him. Um, we saw it. You know, it, what was it? 2018? 2016. He was MVP three. Was I it think. 16? I thought it was. It's was it that long? Been a ago? while. Yeah, he was oh the. Th- I think he was third in MVP voting. It was some there. Well, he was young. Too. Yes. And a much better team around um, him. Probably. Yeah, I think the the Falcons are the big question mark as well. I don't know what we're gonna get out of the Falcons. I really don't. I, I can't tell if they're gonna be real. You know, it's going to be a big question mark. Uh, we we recorded our show on Tuesday and we were talking about it. And then, of course, we lost the audio file or the, the files. Um, but I'm not I don't really know what to expect from them. This is still a big question mark with the with just the entire NFC South. I think the Bucks are the leaders here. They are the the favorites. I would keep them as my favorites. I would. I think it's a coin flip between New Orleans and, and Atlanta at this point. They are. Both just, again, it's just question marks. That's all I can really say. I, I don't want to like keep repeating myself. I don't think there's any sort of guarantees with either team. We saw bad out of out of Kirk in week one, and then we saw good out of Kirk at the end of the game on Monday night. So I'm going to say I'm still not super in on the Saints. I need to see them do it for like five to six weeks. Dallas, it felt like that was kind of inevitable. They were going to lose that, that home winning streak at some point, and they got their butts kicked. Um, 
Although they are really, they're always like really good early. They're always really good early. So that caught me by surprise. Um, but again, I, believing in Derek Carr to be consistently a, a great quarterback is just something that I don't think is super smart. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, and I, a healthy Derek Carr playing at his best versus Kirk Cousins. Cousins is the better quarterback. Um, I would say the Cowboys defense, you think of them as a, as a top-tier defense. They have all the pieces. The Cowboys defense, I think, was top five in the power rankings going into the year. They are without Deron Bland, the uh, young quarterback who was uh, a pro bowler last year. Um, that may have allowed Raheed Shahid to get loose a few times. We also haven't seen Chris Olave really break out yet. Uh, when it comes down to the Bucks and Saints, though, you say which team has more to lean on when the going gets tough and when the season really comes to, to that kind of grind. I think the Buccaneers' defense as a strength is a stronger strength than the Saints' strength, which would be the defense or the offense uh, with Alvin Kamara. Um, I think the Bucks' defense is that reliable group that can really carry you um, in those games that come down to a few points, a few plays, maybe one or two possessions. I've always been a big fan of Rashad White, and uh, I think uh, I think the Bucks' offense is really just reliable. It's filled with reliable guys. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are are like the definition of well, actually, more Mike Evans. Chris Godwin gets hurt a lot. Mike um, Evans is, but they're like the definition yards. of yeah, no matter what, they're like the definition of reliable receivers who will catch the football. Yeah, and Rashad White kind of he he almost like reminds me of Derrick Henry the way he runs, and if you get him running downhill, he's just a monster yeah he's a just a fucking monster so i also don't like the uh, bucks but yeah. you know that's a topic for another day maybe um let's go ahead and pick our games uh then we gotta get into some bad news we're gonna talk in some injuries and then we're gonna check in on the uh rookie qbs so if you don't mind this week you read off the games and i will pay i'll make the picks all right giants and browns in cleveland that's a oh, terrible wait wait game. wait wait, 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 wait. Giants and Browns in Cleveland. Terrible game. Browns in a close one. Six-point spread. I would take the Giants against the spread. Cleveland to win the game. Packers-Titans. I'm going to take the Titans this week, only because I think that kind of attrition is going to set in with no Jordan Love. Um, I don't like the Titans much either way. Um, however, I think... Uh, love week. is love is trending towards playing. Playing, I saw Sunday. that he was doing like walkthroughs and um, preparing to practice. Did he practice today in full? I looked. I think I looked at like six o'clock, and they were just talking about him getting back into walkthroughs. We can check on that. We can check on that. We can make a uh, maybe make a. Uh, they said uh, returns to practice. <clears throat> returns to practice. Um, trying to see if they give any more details or a protective brace that covered by a sleeve. Um, I mean, it looks, it says he was a limited participant. Matt floor wouldn't specify whether love took part in only selected drills or took part in every drill under a rep count, but he's practicing. I mean, he's, he's trending towards playing. We're not sure. We don't know yet. I bet he's a game time decision. Yeah. I would, I would guess no, just based on the timetable they gave us. But if he plays that, Completely, that changed everything. The Packers win the game, and it's not close. Titans are not a good football team. I think you know how I would feel about this one. Bears-Colts in Indianapolis. Colts. Colts, absolutely the Colts. Absolutely the Colts. <laughs> we have we have some, some Bears talk to talk about here in a few minutes, so we'll touch on that again. It's it's more the Colts, I doubt, rather than the Bears. Oh, I understand. The, the Colts will lose the game versus the Bears winning the game. Texans, Vikings in Minnesota. Texans, easy. Stefan Diggs revenge game. <laughs> uh, Eagles, Saints in New Orleans. Saints, Saints. You know, I, I just I just put my my back on the line, kind of for them in our last segment. I'm a big Saints guy this season. I'm taking the Saints. Chargers Steelers in Pittsburgh. The over under is thirty five and a half for this game. That seems like an easy over to hammer. Um, 
I'm going to take the Steelers just because of my well-known disdain for Russell Wilson. If the Steelers win this game, I think Justin Fields cements himself as a starter, and I don't have to hear about Russell Wilson for a while. This Steelers team can't be 3-0. and They can't be 3-0. They can it's, be. It's everything in my soul tells me that they just can't. They can't be. Yeah. But I just don't see him winning. Crazier things have happened. I can't. Justin Fields. Broncos. Moon. Broncos, Bucks, and Tampa. I mean, this one's easy. I don't know if the Broncos <laughs> are going to win game this year. Um, Bucks, easy. Uh, Panthers, Raiders in Vegas. Another team that might not win a game this year. It's the Raiders are going to beat the Panthers. See, this is this was my in spot Vegas. where I was like, the this is the Panthers spot. If you're if you're in a uh, survivor, pick the Panthers here. Um, Dolphins, Seahawks in Seattle. Seahawks. Um, no Tua. I don't. I, I the Seahawks. I don't love. I love Geno. I don't love the Seahawks overall. But is there a better home field advantage in the NFL than the twelfth man in Seattle? I always pick the Seahawks at home. So yeah, I'll go Seattle there. Ravens, Cowboys in Dallas. Cowboys. The Ravens. Baltimore is actually a one point favorite here. That's too. that's a wild thing to do. The Ravens do not look good. Um. 0-2 for a team that was the favorite to take on the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. A lot of people pick them to go to the Super Bowl. They're 0-2. That has to be disheartening. I'm taking uh, Dallas. Somebody's got to have a bounce back game, and I'm, I'll take the home team there. Yeah. 49ers Rams. What do we call it? The Hospital Bowl? Um, yeah. 49ers. Rams are missing too much. Lions, Cardinals. Lions. Chiefs, Falcons. Chiefs by 50. <laughs> ja Jaguars, Bills. This is one of the, the two, like I said, the worst Monday night we've ever had. And they have they give us two games. First of all, why are, why are the Cowboys and Ravens not playing on Monday night? That makes no sense. Um, the Bills, easy. In the next game, the Bengals, easy. That's Bengals commanders. Bengals, yeah. that is a terrible Monday night football game. Uh, we talked about this on a pod that you said, yeah, you said we lost the files, but those are two bad Monday night football games. Neither is a divisional game. Two bad teams playing two good teams. Where are you? Where's the drama? Where's the excitement? Um, this is going to be a hard topic for me to discuss. Um, the most impactful early season injuries, we've seen a lot. Um, I'm sticking with – I'm not going to discuss anybody that was injured in the preseason. So no Duran Bland, no uh, Marquise Brown. Um, guys that were, you know, played week one and week two were hurt at some point and are now on the injured reserve. Um, specifically, Isaiah Pacheco, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Debo Samuel Cooper Cup, and Puka Nakua. Um, what do you think is the most impactful of that group? And you can even say Cup and Puka combined, uh, Debo and CMC combined. Interestingly enough, those two teams are playing each other this week. Um, there's also reports, I believe, that George Kittle may not play. What do you think is the most? Yeah, Kittle's, Kittle's going to be out. Yeah. Kittle's going to be out this week. Um, I mean, it's, it's a quarterback league. It's a quarterback league, and as soon as Tua went down, I was I was actually sitting with a Dolphins fan, and he, the first thing he said is, "Our fucking a, why is the internet not working?" Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I was sitting next to a Dolphins fan. He immediately said, "The season's over." Like I, I don't think you hear that from a Niners fan. I don't think you hear that from a Rams fan. I don't think you hear that from anyone else. It is a quarterback league, and when your quarterback goes down, and especially you're you're trotting out there, Skylar Thompson and and who was it? Tara no, uh, Tyler Huntley. It's it's Tua. It's clearly Tua. Like it, Kittle's gonna miss a game. CMC will probably be back in a couple weeks. Like he was like that was like a game time decision, and then they threw him on IR. Yeah. Um, Debo's gonna pro most likely be back. Pretty soon, um, he didn't go to IR, right? I don't believe so. No, 
Um, Cup and Nakua, that's big. I mean, they have like no weapons over in LA right now for, for Stafford, but it's just not as big as losing your starting quarterback, especially with a team that it's, it's not like, like, listen, people make fun of Tua. Tua is not a horrible quarterback. Like there are 32 quarterbacks in this league. There's a reason that he got a big contract and is, you know, solidified as a starting quarterback. So I would say to a hundred percent. And you're a Tyreek Hill owner in fantasy, aren't you? Yeah. I'm a, I, actually, well, he does. Okay. Though he's still, cause, cause he's just such a, such a monster he can get when it comes no to what. being, yeah. he's getting open no matter what. And especially like a backup quarterback is going to rely on him even more. Yeah. So I, it's, it doesn't worry me all that much. Yeah. Now if Mostert can get healthy and you have a Chan and Mostert, I mean, I can see the Dolphins, especially with the kind of offense they run, putting together some, like, tricky shit for a few weeks, beating some bad teams. If Tua can come back, you know, week eight, I can see the Dolphins making a push for a wild card spot. But you're absolutely right. This, the season is over if Tua can't play again. Um Go get Ryan Tannehill. Exactly. Why is he not? Why did he, they not sign him? I mean, unless he's hurt or he's just really, 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 really bad, he can't be worse than than Skylar Thompson. I mean, can't I would like, take. Tr- give me Tyler Huntley over Skylar Thompson. Abs- I would absolutely take Tyler Huntley over Skylar Thompson. Um, there's always guys out there who can play quarterback. So for you to lose Tua and then say, okay, we're going to roll with Skylar Thompson and sign Tyler Huntley. That gives me the impression that maybe Tua is not in as bad a shape as we thought. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you, you're the Dolphins team that has put big money into their offense. You almost think they would have made a trade if they thought Tua was absolutely done for the year. Um, but as a Chiefs fan, the Pacheco injury does worry me a little bit just because, especially with – other injuries and a potential Rishi Rice suspension. Um, I'm not sure we can count on Xavier Worthy completely yet. Um, you're going to see a major down, like downward trend in the Chiefs' offense for a few weeks. I don't trust Carson Steele, um, but outside of Tua, I think Cooper Cup and Puka is by far the biggest uh, injury news. All right, uh, last thing we're going to talk about today is a quick check-in on the rookie QBs. Um, So far, all three of the first-round QBs who are starting, that's going to be Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Bo Nix, have looked, um, what's the right word, less than impressive. Jaden Daniels had a better game week two, threw for over 200 yards, um, only 44 rushing yards. So a downward trend in his rushing, but significantly better passing week. Um, Bo Nix. I'm sorry, there's breaking news. Um, There is a dog on the field on Thursday Night Football. They're doing tricks with a dog on Thursday Night Football. This is absolutely breaking news. It is hilarious. Wait, is this... They're just throwing... Is this a random dog or is this a a scheduled dog? No, they're, they're doing like a scheduled dog. They're, it's it's like a dog doing tricks, like red panda. What kind of dog? Or uh, what are we? What is this? this ca- looked like a for the for the they uh, just audio went to viewers. Commercial. They just went to commercial. It looked like some. I, I couldn't really tell. I got. I couldn't get a great look. It had a sort of a checkered, not checkered pattern, but like a kind of a white black polka dot type of thing. Not a dalmatian. Not a dalmatian. Are we thinking terrier, uh, p- p- perhaps? Or no, big big boy. Big boy. He's, he's definitely a bigger boy. Okay, big boy. Um. Yeah, I, I had to interrupt, that is but, big news. but continue. Not as good as the yeah. uh, cat on the field, but dog on the field is also always fun. <laughs> That's it. He was the halftime show. That's incredible. He, he was the halftime show. Him. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of him. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> uh, he's come a long way, that dog, from whatever he was doing previously. <laughs> um, so Caleb Williams uh, blitzed and pressured more than any QB in Week Two. The Texans ran a blitz 41% of the time. They were able to pressure him 23 times, I believe. Nine defensive players on the Texans logged more than one, so two or more, uh, quarterback hits. The audacity to say that Caleb Williams is not living up to the hype is beyond me when 
he was quite literally running for his life the entire game. I thought he looked great. I I say the same thing. He was getting he was getting loose. There were times that there were seven guys around him, and he was getting loose and still putting the ball where he wanted to put it. I saw some arm angles um, during his scrambles where he was throwing some Mahomes esque sidearms um, with accuracy. I don't think it's fair to say that a quarterback didn't perform well when they were pressured 23 times in a game. That is absurd. And quite clearly, the book is out on the Bears. They can't protect the quarterback. Uh, the Texans, Yeah, their offensive line looks awful. awful. The Texans blitz, like I said, 41% of the time. That is the most uh, the Texans have blitzed in whoever the defensive coordinator is. I don't know his name off the top of my head. Uh, in his tenure, that's the most he's ever blitzed in a single game. Um, Bo Nix has thrown four. It's probably D'Amico Ryan's is their defensive play call. I believe. I would yeah. assume. I think. Yeah, I think it is Ryan's. Um, Not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, but he blitzed all the time, and there's no run game there. Um, anyway, Bo Nix, four interceptions, no touchdowns so far. I'm shocked Bo Nix is a starting quarterback in the NFL his rookie year. Um, who do you like of the three the most? If you're going to take any of these three quarterbacks and put them on a team, um, obviously you have Anthony Richardson over there in Indianapolis. You're starting a team, um, the Alex Boyajans. Which of these three rookie quarterbacks are you taking? It's obviously between yeah, Jaden Daniels and Williams. Intolerance. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's Caleb Williams, man. Like we, I, if, if we're going based on those quarterbacks, it just is him. He, I still think he looked good on Sunday night. Like he had a lot of really great passes and he was under a lot of pressure. Um, he took one like really violent one. He, he got hit like it, it was a little less violent when he looked at it in slow-mo, but he got hit at the top and the bottom, like literally both guys coming like this. Um, but I would go with Caleb Williams. Like he's still, he, he when he moves, he he moves well. He he can run the ball well. Jane Daniels has looked great. I'll I say that too. Jane. I thought he's, he might be. He's looked fantastic. Yeah, I, I think statistically he's been the best best yeah. of the the rookie quarterbacks. Yes, so he still far. hasn't passed for a touchdown, but he's rushed. His rushing ability, rushing and his his passing yards are good. I think his rating is pretty good too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I know we don't have too much time. Oh no, you're okay. Back, but uh, um. I'd go with Caleb Williams. Yeah, I, I still go with him. 100% Caleb. agree. Caleb Williams is going to be a solid starting quarterback. We'll go another 30 seconds. I thought what's impressive is in Atlanta, not rushing Michael Penix Jr. out there, um, letting him learn for a year behind Kirk Cousins. And as we watch this class of rookie QBs come through uh, throughout the rest of the season, I think there's going to be a lot of talk about going back to that, drafting a guy – bringing in a veteran quarterback like the Chiefs did with Alex Smith, uh, like the Packers did, letting Jordan Love learn, like the Bengals did with Carson Palmer a long time ago, like the Falcons are doing with Michael Penix Jr. Um, getting away from this idea that you can throw someone out there and they can be a franchise I mean, I think Montana, Montana didn't start for like two to three years. Yeah, and then Steve Young Steve played Young behind the same Montana. Um Thank you for tuning in for our second episode. We will be long, dropping every Saturday morning uh, in plenty of time for the Sunday afternoon games. Go ahead and follow us on threads, TikTok, Instagram. Check, uh, check us out on YouTube if you're listening on Spotify. If you're listening on YouTube, go ahead and give us a follow on Spotify. We'll see you next week. Or Apple. We're also on Apple now. Good, good to know. Mm-hmm.